okay everyone i think that it is about time that we have an honest conversation about our baltimore ravens and the one thing in particular that i believe we need to have a discussion about is one jonathan harbaugh now i've had my reservations about the coach throughout his 17 year tenure with the team not fully the whole time but ever since the 2012 season i've had my doubts and when i thought that this man could not be any more delusional we get this I like the way the run game looked for the most part with uh, just the running back run game. And then we have rushed for 185 yards overall, and a lot of that's tomorrow. But that's the formula. But that's the formula. The formula is all the guys together. It's not just the one guy. I think we didn't bring Derek in here to be, you know, the guy that gets the ball 30 times a game. He's done that before. That's really not the plan. The plan is Derek, Lamar, Mark, Isaiah, Zay, Bate, Nelly. You know, that's kind of the plan in this offense. Now, once I saw this press conference from John Harbaugh yesterday, I thought to myself, what did we bring Derrick Henry in for? Now, of course, ideally, no one wants to have their starting running back or any running back on their team carry the ball for 30 times a game. But I thought that we brought him in to lessen the load for Lamar Jackson, to try and help prolong Lamar's career, help him develop as a passer, knowing that he has someone behind him that can get the job done. But as Harbaugh explained, this is going to be a collective effort from everyone. But it still seems like we are getting a little bit more of the same. And also, why is it that if Derrick Henry gets 100 yards rushing, our number one receiver may have only two catches? My question and problem with Harbaugh has always been, why is it an either or type situation? You can have this, but you can't have that. You can get an O-line, but you can't get wide receivers. You can get this or you can get that. Why can we not have them both? Why can't we have Derrick Henry rush for 100 yards and get Zay Flowers six catches, seven catches? It's all how you scheme things up. Now, in this video, I'm not even going to go into the fact that John Harbaugh over his career has had the most offensive coordinators by far over any coach coaching. But what I am going to do is give you five reasons why I believe that John Harbaugh needs to be replaced and someone else needs to be brought in. And I know this video is not going to be for everyone. This video is not going to be for the John Harbaugh apologist or the guys that just feel like, well, if we get rid of him, who are we going to bring in? Just like most teams throughout the NFL, they find younger talent. When the Baltimore Ravens let go of Brian Billick, they brought in a virtual unknown, a special teams coach that had no defensive or offensive background to be the head coach and things turned out okay. So to use that excuse of we don't know what we're going to get to me is the lamest excuse of all. So don't know how long you've been rocking with me. So about a year or so ago, I did a video about bringing in new coaches and the difference that it could make. Well, for me, you know, I used to hear the talk of, well, you Ravens fans are spoiled. We have a winning culture. We have a winning tradition. And I used to be like, you know what? I am kind of spoiled. I'm used to winning every season. I'm used to having a very good team throughout the NFL. But then I recently thought about it and I thought to myself, no, I'm not spoiled. Throughout the short history of the Ravens, the Ravens have had a long tradition and a collective of defensive talent transcended from the sport. We have some of the most iconic defenders that the National Football League has ever seen. And then on top of that, we have the most polarizing, the most electrifying quarterback in NFL history. So do I expect to win with those two factors? Yes, I do. I'm not spoiled. This is the name of the game. You play to win the game. Hello? So to simply squander those opportunities, call it what you may. But I digress. Back to the story. So we talk about replacing John Harbaugh and what could possibly be. Now, there are some times in sports where we have a coach or we have a situation that can only get you so far. And yes, John Harbaugh is a Super Bowl winning coach. He is a coach that has over 160 victories in the NFL. But there comes a time when your team flatlines. They hit their peak they've run their course. The coach's message gets stale and the team just doesn't do as well as they collectively should. So I bring up to you once again, the correlation between maybe the Baltimore Ravens and the Golden State Warriors. Now, back in the day when I was a Golden State Warriors fan, one of my favorite coaches was Don Nelson, Coach Nelly. I love that guy. He didn't win a whole lot, but he was fun. He had to run TMC and they were very entertaining. They just did not win championships. After a while from them flaming out from the playoffs, they moved on. But then in 2010, they went out and hired a new coach in Keith Smart. And now Keith Smart only coached one season with the team going 36 and 46. Now the Golden State Warriors delved into the unknown and they got a coach that didn't work out. 
what did they do? They replaced them. Enter in Mark Jackson. Yes, that Mark Jackson, the former player. Mark Jackson took over a team that wasn't very talented. They weren't very good. And this is where the season of change started. Now, granted, when he came in and replaced Keith Smart, things didn't go as well as expected. Over the partial season that he coached, the team went 23 and 43. Not a very good record, but the Golden State Warriors saw that this man had a plan. Then, in Mark Jackson's second season, he bumped the team up 24 wins, going 47 and 35. So you bring in a good coach, you let him work his system, you see incremental improvement. And also, that team went to the playoffs and lost in the semifinal rounds to the San Antonio Spurs. Now, this is the San Antonio Spurs with Tim Duncan, so hey, kudos to you for making it that far in your second season. Then in Mark Jackson's third season, he bumped the team up even more, with them going 51 and 31. But what happened was, they lost in the first round to the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, guest front office and management took a step back and said you know what he's done a great job he's improved this team he's taken a team to the playoffs two out of his three seasons but guess what he may be limited as a coach because in the playoffs we're just not doing everything that we believe that we can do so what did they do instead of saying you know what let's continue this trajectory of good regular season playoff flame out we're going to bring in a coach that can take us even further and who could that coach be yes steve kerr so they went and took a head coach that won 23 games in his first season to winning 51 games in his last season and moved on from him. Just what I say that they should do from John Harbaugh. He's done what he can do. Yes, we had winning seasons every year, but we get to the playoffs and we flame out. But more on that a little bit later. So the very next season, they brought in Steve Kerr. And what did the Warriors do when they brought in Steve Kerr? Hmm. Warriors first time since 1975 they're NBA champions yes they won a world championship and with Steve Kerr they would go on to win three more even in 2022 when the team was decimated and a little bit older and no one thought they could do it they had a head coach who had great regular season success but then they went and got one that knew how to win championships not a championship championships and this is the correlation that I try to bring with John Harbaugh he has run his course he has taken the Ravens to heights as far as they can go with him as a head coach because he is still stuck in his ways. He is still stuck in that mantra of play great defense and run the ball. And that is just not how the NFL works nowadays. And his rigid, unrelenting nature where he does not want to bend and continues to want to do things his way is what is holding the Ravens back. Now, if you say, Hendo, that's basketball. Let's take a look at the 2017 Philadelphia Eagles with head coach Doug Peterson and a backup quarterback. They went and won the Super Bowl. Not only did they win the Super Bowl, they defeated Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. A favored New England Patriots team, they went out and beat him and won a championship. Okay, cool. A uh, Super Bowl winning head coach went on a coach for three more seasons and the Eagles said, uh-uh, nah, we've had a taste of a Super Bowl. This ain't it. This is not getting it done. So what did they do? They went and hired a relative unknown in Nick Sirianni in 2021. So they had their Super Bowl winning head coach and they moved on from him not knowing what they were gonna bring in. And what did they do? One season after hiring Nick Sirianni, the Philadelphia Eagles went back to a Super Bowl. So you have NBA coach, NFL coach, move on with no knowledge of who they could bring in and both teams won championships. Now, this is not a regularity in sports. I get it. But when you have a roster as talented as the Baltimore Ravens, you need to do something to get yourself over that hump. So the narrative being spun on, we don't know who we're going to bring in. We don't know what we might get. Guess what happens? You bring in a bad head coach, you fire him and bring in somebody else. And it's just amazing to me with all of these teams throughout the NFL, especially over the last four seasons that are bringing in these young, talented, especially offensive coaches that were offensive coordinators, they're turning their teams around. Even if these teams don't have sustained playoff success, their offenses look 10 times better. And what's the one thing missing in Baltimore? That competent offense during the postseason. So what we are going to do right now is, I'm gonna give you those five reasons that you need to think about the Ravens needing to replace John Harbaugh as head coach. And coming in at number five, the number five reason, and to some it's not going to be a big issue until it costs us some games. And that issue is going to be the team's continued lack of discipline, especially in crucial situations. 
and this has been shown periodically throughout all John Harbaugh's career, where in games at certain moments, the team just lacks the discipline, whether it's just certain penalties or especially personal fouls. Matt Judon used to get personal fouls every other play. Now I may be embellishing on that, but he got personal fouls all the time. Last season in the AFC Championship game, the hands to the face, the pushing, all of these personal foul penalties that we got helped in us losing this game. And John Harbaugh has done nothing, nothing to fix this issue since he's the head coach. He's a player's coach. They like him. He's all for the guys. And that's fine and dandy. But sometimes you have to put your foot down and say, you know what? This is killing us. This is killing us in crucial moments. It's helping us to lose games. We need to do better. And he's just not doing that. Coming in at number four, which could be a lot higher, but time management. I have not, for the life of me, in the longest seen a head coach that mismanages his timeouts. We just saw it in the last game. The first half, he didn't use his timeouts at all. In the second half, he used them too early. And then when we needed them late in the game, we did not have them. Even in the preseason, he shows a propensity to not know what he's doing. His challenges are baffling at best. And you would think that over a 17 year period, you would learn, even if you don't know, if you weren't good at it, you would think that he would study up and say, you know what? Let me use my analytics because this is an analytic type team and he loves analytics so much. Why don't you have a spreadsheet on when you should use your timeouts? Why don't you have your little sheet and like, all right, no, can't call the timeout right now. Not worth it. And I know a lot of you say, well, he can get better at it. I have 16 plus years of proof showing it's not going to change. You are who you are and you stick to your tendencies, just like the Baltimore Ravens do, just like John Harbaugh does. And I don't see him changing at any time. Coming in at number three, we're going to call this the years in between. Now, some people are going to cite that John Harbaugh is a Super Bowl winning head coach, 160 victories in the NFL. And these things are extremely hard to do. And I'm going to give him credit for that. But let's look at the in between years. When John Harbaugh came in in 2008, excellent. From 2008 to 2012, the Baltimore Ravens went to the playoffs each and every season, winning a playoff game all five times culminating with the Ravens winning the Super Bowl in 2012. Take none of that away from me. That is outstanding work. Kudos to you. Then in 2018, the Ravens brought in Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has come in and the Ravens have missed the playoffs one time since then. And that was the year that Lamar Jackson got hurt. But if we take a look at the years 2013 through 2017, what did John Harbaugh do? He didn't have those defensive stalwarts. He didn't have Lamar Jackson. And these to me are those years when I think a coach really shows who they are. I'm not saying that you have to win a Super Bowl. I'm not saying that you have to win 14 games. But if you are as great of a head coach as some say that you are, you are going to show that you can overcome the lack of talent on some side of the ball. Because the Ravens did not have a dearth of talent. They had some talented pieces here and there. And I'll give you the fact that Ozzie Newsom got rid of Anquan Bowden and left Joe Flacco with nothing too much to work with. But during those years, John Harbaugh and the Baltimore Ravens went 40 and 40 with one playoff appearance, one playoff win. And you're going to say, huh, one playoff appearance? Playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? Yes, one. And guess what happened coincidentally during that one playoff season? I'll give you one hint. We did something a little bit different that season. And what could it be? Ugh. We didn't have one of John Harbaugh's boys as the offensive coordinator. Yes, that was the season that the Ravens had Gary Kubiak for his first and only season as the offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. And what happened with Joe Flacco? He had a career year. Justin Forsett, career year. So we bring in a real offensive coordinator during that one and only time. And that's the one time that we go to the playoffs. Playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You see where I'm going with this? I know a lot of you are going to look over and be like, ah, you know, it's other factors, but just look at it. The Ravens were lacking offense during these years. And the one year that we get offense, we go to the playoffs. So when things are centered around John Harbaugh and the way that he likes to do them, things don't tend to go too well. But when we bring in outsiders or we bring in other factors, things go right. So the years that John Harbaugh could have proven to me at least that he was an above average head coach, those would have been the years. I don't need you to show me that you can coach with Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, Lodi Nada, Peter Boulware, Chris McAllister, Lamar Jackson. I need you to show me that you can coach when you just got guys on your squad. 
coming in at number two is going to be game planning and in-game adjustments. Now, throughout John Harbaugh's career, he has had problems with adjusting in-game. When certain things are going a certain way, the Baltimore Ravens tend to panic and things get out of whack. Case in point, this last game versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Where have we seen this before? Where have we seen a team go up on us and we panic and now we get out of the identity of who the Ravens actually are? Saw it in the AFC Championship game. We see it in the playoffs every single season. Now, for the most part, don't get me wrong, during the regular season, and in most games, the Ravens come ready to play. But when we get to the playoffs, it's amazing to me how he gets out coached each and every time. And if not for a miraculous play by one of our superstars to propel us to a victory, he gets out coached. I'm not understanding how you are in control of this team. You're the lead man. And when something's not going right, you don't step to your coordinators and say, listen, you need to change this. You need to do something different. 2012 AFC Championship game versus the New England Patriots. First half, back and forth game, it was really close. Joe Flacco had to go in during halftime and say, hey, we are not going to win like this. We need to switch it up or we're going to lose this game. And then I guess John Harbaugh was like, huh, I didn't think about it like that. You're right. And the Ravens went on and beat the New England Patriots because they changed up John Harbaugh's philosophy. Then we fast forward to last year in the playoffs against the Houston Texans. Once again, first half, a very tight game until Lamar Jackson goes in and screams his head off like, yo, we have to switch it up. What we are doing is not working. And then the Ravens went on to blow out the Houston Texans. But this is something that the quarterback should not have to do. This is something that a head coach should see in game and be like, yo, it's not working. Let's try something a little bit different. Hey, you need to fix your protections. You need to fix your schemes. Listen, instead of blitzing all the time, we need to drive back in zone. Like whatever it is, he is not taking command of his team especially at the most important moments when the Ravens need a leader. Now, it's all not on him. You are the head man. You are watching things play out. And I'm tired of the rinse and repeat Groundhog Day speech that we get after every playoff law. Oh, we only ran the ball that many times? Hmm. I didn't know. I mean, during the game, I thought we ran a lot more, but how do you not know you did not run? And this didn't just happen last year. This has happened damn near every year in the playoffs. Now we go back to 2022 when Lamar Jackson is not playing. So you can't blame Lamar for this. J.K. Dobbins is clearly upset by his usage. And what did they run him? About 15 times. Then with the game on the line and the Ravens inside of the five yard line, instead of saying, yo, what are you thinking about running, Greg? What are you looking at? What's your thought process? No, you let him do Greg Roman type things. And instead of taking your 230 pound running back or your elusive back that they could not stop and running them in from the, what was it, the two, three yard line, you go for a quarterback sneak at the two yard line. This is the pattern that I'm talking about when it comes to adjustments needed to be made during a game to help the Ravens win. And he's just not doing it. I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of us changing our philosophy when it matters the most. Regular season, we do everything right. And then in the postseason, he becomes a shell of his former self. I'm not getting it. But the number one reason that we need to have a talk about John Harbaugh as far as continuing being the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens is let's talk about his greatest accomplishment and that being Super Bowl 47 and the Ravens taking home the win. Once again, can't take anything away from him. He is a Super Bowl winning head coach. But to me, I think that he gets a little too much credit for the Ravens winning the Super Bowl. Yes, he was the head man. Yes, he was in charge blah 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 but if you are a new Baltimore Ravens fan and you just see that the Ravens won a championship there are some things that you do not know there are some things that you may not have seen as a fan back then because trust me I was ingrained in that 2012 season like locked in laser focus and I paid attention to everything so I want you to pay attention to this in 2012 the Baltimore Ravens started the season nine and two with one of those wins being lucky as hell with the hey diddle diddle Ray Rice up the middle. But they won the game. They started the season off. They were the front runners for the Super Bowl. I remember them defeating the Dallas Cowboys and Jacoby Jones, may he rest in peace, running down the sideline. And that Dallas coach just like, because he knew he was about to lose his job. Like I remember so much about that season. But the one thing that is not told about that season is that the Baltimore Ravens had lost three straight games. After starting the season nine and two, they lost three games and looked horrible. And I mean, truly horrible. They lost to the Washington Commanders 
and Kirk Cousins coming in off the bench leading them to a win. Like it was getting bad. And what all that led up to was the mutiny. The leaders from the Baltimore Ravens locker room went to John Harbaugh and was like, bruh, we don't like how you're practicing. We don't like how you're running this team. Like you are actually sabotaging what we are doing. So for the third time, players had to step in because this coach was not doing what he needed to do. Then the Ravens went out on the next game and beat the defending Super Bowl champ, New York Giants, and clinched the playoff berth and clinched the division title, which got them to the playoffs. So then we get to the playoffs and what is different about this year than most? Well, the Baltimore Ravens actually, once again, which seemed to be routine for us, fired offensive coordinator and promoted Jim Caldwell to run the offense. Once again, another outside guy that's not one of John Harbaugh's nepotism buddies who has a different perspective on offense and look what Joe Flack on that offense did during that run. They were putting up points. They were going toe to toe with Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, and Tom Brady because you had a man that wasn't one of John Harbaugh's guys running the show. And the difference is that a lot of you people may not know is that he didn't run John Harbaugh's Baltimore Ravens offense. People love Todd Munkin now and what he's done with the offense. Todd Munkin is limited because he still has to run a version of the Baltimore Ravens offense. That's why sometimes you look at some things and like, mm, this kind of looks similar because they are handicapped in the things that they can do because of the head man. He likes to do it his way. He wants things to be run how he wants them to be run because he feels he is smarter than everyone else. And I think that's where the Ravens run into a lot of trouble with him and EDC. Instead of doing the right thing, they want to prove that their way is smarter and better than everyone else's. But when we bring in these outside forces, we win and we win titles. So the Ravens go on, win the Super Bowl, but a lot of people don't realize how much that had to do with the players. And I'm not taking anything away from John Harbaugh and him leading this team, but it cannot be coincidence that when the players kind of took over, when you have the inmates running the asylum, we don't have the playoff failures we have the playoff success. When your leaders and your greatest stars intervene and kind of override what the head coach is doing and talking about, we win. When you have an offensive coordinator that's not tied to John Harbaugh and his buddy-buddy system, we win. So you can't tell me that we can't bring in a Kyle Shanahan, a Sean McVay type individual, because there are a lot of them out there right now. We can't bring in a Ben Johnson, well not Ben Johnson, because he's not ready. Oh, she, she wasn't ready but someone like that to run this offense and get the most out of Lamar Jackson. Because the last thing that I'll bring up is under John Harbaugh, it is criminal what they have done to Joe Flacco and what they've done to Lamar Jackson. Most of these coordinators nowadays, being that they don't have that old school mentality, don't bring in an offense a la a Greg Roman and tell quarterbacks, run my system. They tailor their systems to the individuals that are running it. They say, you know what, these are your strengths. We're gonna adapt this in and tie this into what I have going on. John Harbaugh led teams don't do that. They run the system that they wanna run that they feel most comfortable with. You can't tell me that bringing in someone that's gonna get the most out of Lamar Jackson it's going to put him in situations. You can't tell me that a Mike McDaniel or a Kyle Shanahan wouldn't put Lamar in the best situations to win, nor would they go out there and alienate the guys to come in and play and help make Lamar better. And we don't need you here. If you're worried about stats, don't come to Baltimore. But what the hell else are they supposed to worry about? This is how receivers get paid. Their stats. You can't have a receiver that's a great blocker out there and say, you know what? You're going to get your money because you block really well. No, you're going to look at the numbers and say, well, you know what? Your average is 700 yards a year. We can only give you so much. So that's how they make their money. So not only are you limiting Lamar schematically, you're limiting him on who he can play with because you want to bring in your guys. So your guys were the Kamale Correas, Bronson Kafusis. Those were your guys because they were good people. They had a good interview and you felt good about them. They couldn't play a lick of football. This is why I think that the Baltimore Ravens need to start fresh and start over. Because once again, when a coach is in a system, when a coach is in an organization for too long, the message gets stale. And when the message gets stale, team doesn't win. And I'm not talking regular season wins because you play the game to win championships, that is. Put them on the board. House Mazzoli. Got it. Championship. Nah, man, I'm cool.